So one of the questions asked in chapter four on civil liberties and civil rights is what is more important, civil rights or civil liberties? And I want to use this question to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive and explanation about the important differences between civil liberties and civil rights. Civil liberties is the idea that there are certain fundamental freedoms that we as citizens enjoy and that are protected from government interference, meaning the government cannot uh, constrain, restrain, interfere with certain fundamental freedoms that we find in the U.S. Constitution. And what this does is that it ensures some fundamental aspects of our citizenship are protected from the government. Now, the First Amendment is kind of the best example of this idea of civil liberties. And it starts off by saying very clearly, one would think, Congress shall make no law. Then it goes on to list some fundamental civil liberties that the government cannot interfere with. Notice how it only says Congress. That meant the national government could not interfere with First Amendment freedoms. Before the Civil War, that was thought to only apply to the national government, that actually the states could indeed interfere with your civil liberties unless they were protected within state constitutions. What we have seen since the Civil War era and the Reconstruction period, particularly through the 14th Amendment's uh, phrase where no state shall deny due process, that has begun a process of what we call incorporation of the Bill of Rights to state governments and to their actions. So through the notion of incorporation now, we are guaranteeing certain fundamental freedoms through the Bill of Rights to apply not only to the, to the federal government, but also to state governments as well. Now, a key thing to think about is that these freedoms are not necessarily absolute in nature. I think we talked about in class before we broke uh, due to the virus about the idea of freedom of speech and how I could not walk into a crowded, darkened movie theater and yell fire. That is not protected under my freedom of speech because other fundamental freedoms like life uh, would be impeded upon by those who would hear that term fire and try to escape. So certain freedoms uh, are fairly broad, fairly wide ranging, but they are not absolute necessarily in their nature. The other aspect is the notion of civil rights. And here, the difference between a civil liberty and a civil right is that civil rights are freedoms protected by the government. The government may step in, unlike with a civil liberty where the government is excluded from or prevented from interfering with fundamental freedoms. Civil rights gives the notion that the government can step in and protect fundamental freedoms. And what this basic idea is around is the protection of fundamental aspects of citizenship against things like discrimination by either the government or potentially by private actors. And this really comes out of the Reconstruction era, uh, post-Civil War, the period of time uh, that Congress, particularly under Republican control, was trying to create equality for all uh, Americans, particularly for black African Americans. Things like the 13th Amendment that said that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States 
or any place subject to their jurisdiction, meaning the states. Now, you could be held for involuntary servitude as a punishment for a crime, but you had to be duly convicted. But you could not be held as a slave post-13th Amendment. The 14th Amendment is probably seen as one of the most important amendments to the U.S. Constitution. Because again, it says that no state shall make or enforce any law, which shall, and it goes on to list several things, but one of the most fundamental is the denial of the equal protection of the law, meaning the law has to treat all equally. The final Reconstruction Era Amendment is the 15th Amendment, where the right of citizens to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. All three of these amendments are designed to protect fundamental freedoms by the government. There are others that also extend the right to vote to women, to those older than 18 years of age. Those are kind of fundamental freedoms designed to be protected against discrimination. And it can be guaranteed either by the U.S. Constitution through these amendments or by law, or what we oftentimes call statutes. Most notably, uh, in within the past 50 years of American history, two key uh, pieces of legislation that came through Congress signed by President Lyndon Johnson, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Those were seen as critical components of civil rights, particularly for African Americans in the middle of the 1960s. So when it comes to thinking about civil rights and civil liberties, again, we're talking about this notion of can we have personal freedoms that the government should not be allowed to interfere with, meaning the limit the government in terms of interactions with those personal freedoms. But conversely, we want legal protections that the government should ensure to create equality for all kind of an active government. So if you think about civil liberties as limiting government, civil rights as being active government, that kind of government interaction to ensure, to create equality, that's kind of the way that I would think about it. And it's often defined, uh, both civil liberties and civil rights, through constitutional law cases, uh, most notably opinions from the Supreme Court of the United States or by laws passed by Congress. Now, the first part of the question asks, what is more important? Well, I would have to ask you to define what is important. Is it more important to have limited government to ensure that personal freedoms should not be interfered with? Or is it more important that government should be active in protecting those freedoms to ensure to create a a sense of equality among citizens. I think both are important to being a citizen of the United States, but ultimately citizens have to think about what should be the government's role in ensuring both civil liberties and civil rights are available for all, meaning we the people. Now, if you want more information about civil liberties and civil rights, I would encourage you to visit this website. Uh, the Cornell Law School has a great website. Uh, if you go to the section WEX and then civil underscore rights, you'll see a lot of information about civil rights and particularly civil liberties as well within that website. Catawba also offers uh, two constitutional law cl classes, uh, Civil Liberties and Civil Rights, which focuses exclusively on the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment. 
and also the previous constitutional law class which focuses on separation of powers and issues of federalism.